How long does it take to start getting organic traffic from Google? This is a question that I get asked a lot and my answer is wildly unsatisfying. It's usually, it depends, but almost never less than a week. But that all changed when I started using a new tool called Surfer SEO. By focusing exclusively on on-page SEO factors, I've been able to rank multiple pages in Google and drive traffic to them within 24 hours. Honestly, I can't believe that I used to write content without it. I think that all bloggers should use it, but you're going to be extremely excited about it if you are a smaller blogger with a low domain authority and you don't have a bunch of backlinks or you don't have them with the connections or skills yet to build them. You'll have a much better chance of ranking for competitive keywords quickly and easily without all that other stuff. Yes, domain authority and backlinks and all of that will always still matter, but this is going to give you a fighting chance if you don't currently have those things and you want to start ranking your blog right away. All right, let's get into my computer. I'll show you how I'm using Surfer SEO. This isn't gonna be like the ultimate guide, but I am willing to make that if you guys are interested. This is just gonna be a quick overview of how to use the content editor uh, to create content most quickly. The editor is absolutely the most powerful feature that they offer in Surfer. So I wanna show you that in this video. But if you want more and you want me to do all the other stuff like the content planner, leave a comment down below. And if we get enough, I will make that happen for you guys. All right, here we are inside of Surfer. If you look up here to the top left, we have a couple of different tools. These are all pretty powerful, but the most powerful by far, and it's not close, is the content editor. This is gonna be what we're gonna focus on. I would pay exactly what Surfer costs just for the editor. It is 90% of the value in my opinion. The other stuff is amazing and it can really kind of help you replace a tool like an Ahrefs. I am never gonna cancel my Ahrefs uh, account, but this is pretty close uh, to, to emulating a lot of the things that Ahrefs does. It's just very different. So if you're used to Ahrefs, this will be different for you. But what I like that this does that Ahrefs does not is the content editor side of things. So let me show you what that looks like. So first, let's just open up the content editor here. And let's say that I want to create a blog post and I already have the blog topic in mind. So let's just, actually time out. Let me go find a blog topic, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Our topic is going to be how much does an English bulldog cost? This is actually a First of all, I love English Bulldogs. I have one myself, and this is something that I Googled because I was curious because I went to Petland or whatever, and it was like $11,000. I was like, no, that is not sounding right. So, but whatever, that's off topic. But what we're gonna do here is we're going to just, with that as our topic, we're going to do create content editor. Also, you can choose based on mobile results or desktop. I recommend using desktop, although, it is leaning now towards mobile being more popular. For now, just keep it simple and keep it as it was. And then you can also change the location if you want. That is only going to be relevant if you're doing local SEO, uh, but we are just doing in the United States. So we're going to click on Create Content Editor, and now it's gonna start creating this mock-up for us for how we should start creating our content. It's gonna give us some guidelines to follow. It's very, very powerful. Uh, let's just give it a minute to run through here. Okay, now it's good to go. Typically it only takes like less than a minute for these to run. Go ahead and click on it. Now you're gonna see a lot of different things here. Let me go ahead and zoom up a little bit to make it a little bit easier for you to see. Save all the space possible. All right, let me explain what you're seeing here. So first over here on the left side, this is where we're gonna actually be writing the content. So with Surfer, it's best to actually create the post in here and then paste it into WordPress. It's not exactly the smoothest process, but it's so worth it, absolutely worth it. And a lot of people don't write their first drafts in WordPress anyway. If you do, it's not that big of a hassle. I haven't found a big issue with it. Although, like I said, it is a little bit of an extra step, but it's worth it, okay? so. Just like with a basic editor, you can do everything, H1s, H2s, H3s, paragraphs, images. One thing with the images is they do count alt text. All right, so adding alt text and images is going to help the score. So just essentially right here is your drafting area. This is where you'll actually be creating the content. If you've already created content on this topic, you can paste it in here and you just have to do a little bit of reformatting. But everything that appears there, 
goes towards the content score. And, and what is the content score? Over here, the content score is from zero to 100, typically starts in between like five and 10. This one's odd that it goes all the way up to 20 with just one, one keyword. So that kind of gives me a good idea that this is probably not a very competitive uh, search term, which is great. Uh, down here, it gives us content structure. So it tells us how many words we currently have. And then below it, it recommends the number of words that we should be aiming for. And before you dive right in, this is very important. We need to make some tweaks, but let me finish explaining what we're looking at before we do that. Okay, and then we've got the suggested number of headings along with our current number that we have. So every time that we write a new one, like this one is an H1. If we change it to an H2, it's gonna go up to uh, one. It doesn't count the H1s and the heading count. That's just for the title. Uh, paragraphs, it recommends the number of paragraphs and then the recommended number of images, which I think is very important because I was under the misconception early on that, that too many images was a bad thing and that images just slowed the page down and they weren't worth using. That, that's just really not true. Uh, the, if the images make the article better, use images. And this shows us how many images the other blogs are using. Then below it, we have some other cool stuff here. This is going to be basically the checklist in order of the terms that these other articles are using. And not only that, but it also shows the total times that they're using them and how many we should use them as well. So for how much does an English Bulldog cost? On average, it's being used between one and three times. If we use it four times, watch this. This is what I love. It, it's the anti-keyword stuffing tool. If I put it in too many times, it's going to tell me that I have to lower that. It's not just putting keywords in for keywords sake. That's why I love this tool and I'm, that's really what held me back from using it is I just thought that they were keyword stuffing tools and they really are not. So when something's green, that means it's good. When something is this pinkish red, that means that you need to add to it and vice versa. If it is uh, too many, sometimes you have to remove some uh, mentions because it looks like keyword spamming. Okay. And these are ranked in order of importance. So for example, these ones down here at the bottom, these are not as important. They're not gonna impact the score as much. So like if I type in complete health coverage, it doesn't move the score. But if I type in English bulldog puppy, it immediately moves the score up five because that is a more important uh, term. And so we're gonna work through it downward. Finding, creating the content so it doesn't sound robotic is going to be the, the big struggle. I thought it was going to be a bigger struggle at first, but it's really, it's really not. If you try to get a hundred on your content score, yes, you're going to end up with probably some weird sounding content because you're going to be forcing things. You don't need to have a perfect content score. Before we dive into actually writing, you always need to come up here to this customization setting. I recommend you at least check it. You don't always have to make changes, but you should at least check it. So what this is doing is it's showing us all the different articles that are ranking for that term. Next to those, to the left, is a little toggle that lets us include them or remove them as competitors. This is super important because these are the things that the algorithm is using to create our checklists and to tell us what words and how many pages or how many paragraphs and all that stuff. So it's very important that we get this right. And sometimes it'll have selected some articles that aren't necessarily in line with what we're actually trying to write. So it's very good, but it's not perfect. So, so let's, let's try to find a few examples. So over here, you've also got them ranked by content score. And I like to click on them and actually take a look at the pages. This kind of breaks down everything. The ongoing costs is owning a bulldog right for you. And for whatever reason, that one's not included. I actually do want to turn that one on. I want to I want to include that because that's what my article is going to be like. Now let's try this next one. Do you want a new dog? Also, they are so cute. Uh, here's the true English bulldog price. Blah, blah, blah. Make sure that it's relevant and similar to the type of article that you have in your head. But yeah, that one, that one's good. All right. How much are English bulldogs cost of buying? This one looks good to me. This other one right here, the cost guide with calculator. This one makes me nervous because it's 7,482 words. So I'm thinking that maybe this one might be a bit of a mistake. There's no way. Holy crap, maybe they did. Wow. 
Talk about comprehensive. My goodness. Okay. <laughs> that's too much. <laughs> that that's that's too much. I'm not no. We're taking that out. Okay, and by taking that out, it's going to dramatically reduce a lot of things. It's going to reduce the number of words that we're aiming for, and it's going to 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 change the article a lot. Right? So let's keep that. Um, let's check this other one. It's 6,000 words. Man, people that like their dogs love their dogs. This one's very similar. I'm taking that one out too because I just I want my article to be short. Uh, so what what we can do here is I'm gonna I'm gonna then come down here to content structure and notice how when I made those changes it adjusted the number of recommended words it adjusted the number of headings and it adjusted the paragraphs and images. Also I can come down here and I can see which terms I I might not want to include. By default if you just go with what they say it's not gonna be terrible but there will be times where it it actually isn't the right thing to do. Nine times out of ten I usually don't make any tweaks or just very small tweaks. This one I'm making a lot of tweaks because it's just a relatively unique example. And I'm glad because this is giving you a good idea of, of what you should be looking out for, okay? Uh, British Bulldog, blah, 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 blah. That stuff looks fine. Hip dysplasia, I guess that's a big thing with Bulldogs. All right, all right, so now we have a different looking set over here of terms, all right? And they do have all, but I recommend looking at this over here, the NLP, and you can come over here into the outline and you can get suggestions for titles, headings. You can see different questions that, that you might wanna include on here. And those would be great for FAQ schema. The brief here, if you add notes, they'll show up here. I usually do not do that. But yeah, with the outline, you can see different recommended headings. And if I want, I can click and just add them. Any of these words that are provided, you can use in your content. It's not plagiarism. These are unique, generated, AI generated. However, sometimes they're nonsensical, totally nonsense. So you have to check them out. So write them in your own words. And in most cases, if you do this, it's just going to be nonsense. It shows the average English bulldog price for an average sized puppy by one smaller breeder, but reliable. See, that sentence makes dog shit sense. <laughs> All right, so be vigilant there. Don't just copy those. I usually actually don't copy anything. I just pretty much write it from scratch. But if you want to kind of give yourself a little bit of a head start and you're the type that prefers to edit bad content over just write and then edit, go for it. Okay, but like I said, as we write down here, we can uh, do things like add images. So notice that when we add images, I can just put like cost of bulldog puppy. Okay, and then I can add, let's say let's add a heading. It's gonna continually grow that score. And my goal with this one would be to outscore all of the other articles on the topic, right? So let's go back to that organic competitors here. We can see all of the different scores that they had. So these are their, their SEO scores, the content editor scores that they would have if they were written inside of Surfer SEO, okay? So the goal for this one would be in the 80s. The highest one I see here is 85, and that's that one that's super long. The funny thing is, is that the other one that's super long actually is only getting a 65. And again, we've got the content structure, and this would be where I'd put notes, I'd put, all right? And then this is the last thing I wanna show you. This is so cool. I give these to my content assistants and, and, and writers. So what I do is I just copy this link, I share it with them, and then they can edit it directly in here. And it works just like a Google Doc. You can edit it back and forth. When they're done editing it, they can send it to me. And then when it's done, I can mark it as done. So cool, so cool. The only annoying part, like I said earlier, is that when you're done, you will have to come through here, copy, paste. There are other processes. Uh, Surfer does have a Google Docs plugin. I don't use it. They don't have a WordPress plugin yet, although I'm just, praying that they do get that soon that would be amazing but you can find other workarounds it depends what your writing process is like you can export things to uh, you can download the guidelines download the content as html and just upload the content i don't use that on my sites i use it'll just mess things up i use the thrive architect and if i were to just upload the html it would be problematic but yeah guys 
that is it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that excites you. It's very, very fun. I've been using it like crazy. I, my first month, I ran out of of editing credits, and I was just like dying for the week that I had to wait to get more. <laughs> but uh, totally awesome software, guys. Go out and check it out. There's a link to sign up down below. And as always, if you enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want two to three additional affiliate marketing related videos every month. Every month, every week, every week. I, I can't even say it myself. It seemed weird to say, but yeah, two to three every single week. Subscribe, guys. Let's go.